Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's build a simple but really awesome item inspect system. You see this kind of thing in many many games, you have items or objects, maybe in your inventory or just some list, and you can look at the 3D object in the UI. And by touching it, you can also rotate the object and look at it from any angle. This is actually quite easy to do, it just requires one super useful Unity feature which I already covered in many videos so you can probably already guess what it is. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course which contains over 30 lectures each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section answering your questions every single day, so check out all the courses with the link in the description. Alright, so let's build our item inspect system. Over here is my starting point. I have this UI which would be something like an inventory system, so I just have a bunch of slots and each one of them is a button, but what we're going to build here could easily be applied to any other inventory system. For example, I covered a normal inventory system quite a long time ago, and then I also covered the really interesting Tetris inventory system in another video. You can use whatever inventory system you want, all you really need to know is when the player clicks to select an item or object, as long as you know when that happens and you can build this system on top of that. So here I've got my dummy inventory system, and here is the script, it's pretty simple. The main thing is really just a list of items, so this is an item scriptable object. If you don't know about scriptable objects, they are really awesome, it's a super useful way to store data in distinct assets, I also cover them in detail in another video. Over here I'm using that scriptable object for the item definitions. Again this is all very simple, so over here I just have two fields, so one for the 2D sprite of the item, and another one for the prefab which contains the 3D mesh. Then here in the project files I've got all my items, so all of the instances of the scriptable object, and then over here I've got prefabs with all of the 3D models, as well as the 2D sprites. And my inventory script simply cycles through that list, instantiates a template, and then sets it to the 2D image. Then on a button click I simply have got a select item which then fires off this event. So as you can see, very simple. Now it's on top of this that we're going to build the item inspect system. Let's begin by making the visual, so let's go into the UI, so over here is my canvas, I've got the inventory with the background, so it's in here, let's create an empty game object, call this the item 3D viewer, then inside let's add another UI object, this one let's make it a raw image, so a raw image, not an image, you'll see why in a bit. Okay, so now just position it somewhere around here, just expand this one, and size up the other one. Now to make this look a bit better, I'm actually going to put it inside a mask. Okay, so here it is. So I've got my raw image, it's inside a mask object just to make that nice round border, and then behind it just a background for the background. Alright, so now for the logic, let's make a new script. And just attach it to the main game object, okay? Now over here, first like I said we need to know when the item is selected in the inventory, so for that we need a reference to the inventory system, okay so I've got a serialized field, so over here in the editor just need to drag that reference, and then here we can now do a private void start, and on start let's go into the dummy inventory and subscribe to the on item selected event. And again, this event is fired whenever I select an item, so whenever I click on it. So here, let's verify that it's working, just do a simple debug.log. So I'm running the game, and as I click on this weapon, and yep, there you go, I've got the log right here. So I select that one, select the key, select the bike, and so on. Okay, so far so good. Like I said, you can use any inventory system you want, really the only connection with the inventory system is through this event. Alright, so now that we know when the player selects an item, now let's handle spawning the 3D object. Now the prefab reference is stored inside the item scriptable object, so over here I've got a transform for the prefab. So when we select, let's instantiate that. Just go into the item scriptable object and instantiate the prefab. Then for the position, we don't want it to spawn on top of the regular world, so let's spawn it somewhere really far away. Okay, on a thousand, thousand, a thousand, and quaternion.identity. Okay, now we need to keep track of the objects that we instantiate. 
And before we spawn a new one, let's destroy the previous one if it exists. Okay, so let's test this and see if it's spawning the item visual when I click on it. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. All right, here we are, and here's my hierarchy, so nothing is spawned. Now I select the key, and there you go, it spawns the key. Now I select a pistol, and there you go, destroys the key and spawns a pistol. All right, awesome. Now let's handle the actual visual. So this is the part where I use the thing that I already talked about in several previous videos. You can probably already guess, and yep, we're going to use rendered textures. If you don't know about them, check out the video where I cover them in detail. For that, the first thing we're going to need is to set up a new camera. So let's create a new camera. Call this the item inspect camera. Now for the position, let's put it around a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. We're going to see the exact position in a little bit. Okay. Right now, this second camera is rendering onto the main screen. So let's make our render texture. So let's create a new render texture. And here on the output texture, we just drag it. Okay, so now for the render texture settings. Over here, the main one is really just the size. So this will depend on how big is your item window in the final game. So over here, this window is about half of the resolution. And I'm using a reference resolution of 1080p. So if we use something like 1024, that should be more than enough. Okay, so that's it. It's assigned. And now this part is why I said to make a raw image instead of an image. If we go into the raw image, We've got a field for the texture and we can de drag our render texture. If we made it an image, it would only accept the sprite, so we would not be able to drag this reference. I actually made a lecture in my Ultimate Unity Overview course going through all of the differences between image and raw image and the differences between texture and sprites. So check out that lecture on the course if you want to learn more. Okay, with this, we can now test and put the camera on the perfect position. Here with the game running, let's first spawn an item. Let's spawn just a normal hat. Then let's go into scene view. Let's look at the hat, so just select it, and I'm going to press F in order to focus on the object. And now here's a quick Unity tip. You can move the scene camera to get it placed exactly as you want it. Then when you've got the perfect position, you can select the item inspect camera, and then you press the hotkeys, Control, Shift, and F, and that places the camera on the exact position and rotation as the scene camera. So you go down there, the camera is viewing the exact same thing as the scene camera. So that's super easy whenever you want to position certain objects. Okay, now of course the issue is we're in play mode, so let's not lose this position. So let's select the camera, go into the transform, copy the component, leave the play mode, then on the transform right click, paste component values. And now if we test again, and we spawn an item, and yep, there you go, the camera is indeed on the perfect position, looking straight at the item. All right, awesome. Okay, so just like this, it's almost done. We can already click on any item, and we have the ability to view the 3D model in this really nice window. Now the only thing missing is just one more feature, the ability to click on this window and rotate the object. For that, we're going to need to listen to some mouse events. So over here in our script, first let's set the using. So using, it's inside Unity Engine systems, And now we can implement the various interfaces to listen to those mouse events. What we want here is to click and drag the mouse to move the object. So the perfect one for this is the eye drag handler. So let's implement this interface. So here it is, the on drag function. Now let's do a quick test, just in case you don't know what this does. So debug.log, let's just do something. Okay, let's see. So here, if I just click on it, you can see nothing on the console. If I click and let go, nothing on the console. It only happens if I click and then I move a bit and there you go, we've got the on drag event. And it's only fired whenever I move the mouse. So if I leave the mouse stable, it's not actually adding more. But if I move the mouse, yep, there you go, we've got our events. Okay, so this is perfect for what we want to do. Back in the code, over here on this event, we have a pointer event data. This contains lots of data from the pointer, and one of those is the delta. So that's how far the mouse moved in the last frame. So we can access the event data.delta. And then using the mouse movement, we can simply convert this movement into some object rotation. So let's take our object, so the item prefab that we spawned. And then we're going to modify the Euler angles. And we're going to set it to this. However, if we do it directly like this, it doesn't work as expected, but let's try it anyway. So we're going to move using the delta x and the delta y, let's see. And actually here it needs to be plus equals. The delta is how much it moves on a per frame basis, so we want to constantly add that onto our Euler angles. So here we are, there's the head, and if I click and I drag, and I move the mouse to the left, and nope, you can see it's actually moving on the y axis. 
And if I move to the right, same thing. So it's moving vertically instead of horizontally. And if I move vertically, and yep, there you go. Now it's rotating horizontally instead of vertical. So really it's just doing the opposite that we want. Whenever we have some mouse X movement, we want to rotate the object along the Y axis. And whenever we have Y movement, we want to rotate on the X axis. So let's change that. Here, just change, use the Y in here and the X in here. So now if I click and I move, and yep, there you go, it is now working. So it's now moving horizontally. And if I go up and down, yep, it is moving vertically. The only issue now is that it's reversed. So as I move to the right, it's actually rotating to the left and so on. So let's reverse this. So here, just add a minus on both of them. And let's do a final test. So here we are, and I can click on any item in order to select it and view it over here on the nice view. Then I can click on the window and drag the mouse, and there you go, I am rotating the object. I can inspect it in any way I want. So I want to see the rear end of this hat, and I can do that. I can select the bike, and yep, there you go, here's my nice bike 3D model, and I can look anywhere. I can select this nice pistol and look anywhere, select this SMG, and so on. All right, great. So here is the system fully working, and as you can see, it's all pretty simple. Like I said, you can connect this with any inventory system. The only connection we have is the event, that's pretty much it. So you could use this with the inventory system that I made a long time ago, or the really interesting Tetris inventory system, or any other inventory system you have. So here it is, a really nice item inspect system. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.